Product placement has been around for about as long as movies and TV have existed, but some examples are definitely more effective than others. From Superman's cigarettes to Shazam Skittles, these sponsored moments are the worst of the worst. Google effectively has a monopoly on the search engine market, to the point that looking something up online is more commonly referred to as Googling it. Of course, that hasn't stopped other tech companies from trying to push their own alternatives. Especially Microsoft, which was making a big advertising push for their service Bing in 2010. Most Bing ads from this time are entirely forgettable, but the website's presence on the TV show Hawaii Five-0 will always be remembered for how awkward and unexpected it is. During a visit to an art gallery in the show's first season, characters Chin and Kono have a disagreement about a sculpture that can apparently only be solved in one particular way. Oh, well, you don't believe me? Bing it. So naturally, Kono takes out her Windows Phone 7 and bings it, proving that her cousin is a true art snob. As much as Microsoft wanted to make Bing happen, it never really did. No thanks to Hawaii Five-0. No one is searching for famous artists on Bing in real life. They're just looking up how to get to Google. Transformers – Age of Extinction is the fourth film in director Michael Bay's massive franchise and the first to feature Mark Wahlberg as its lead. Like its predecessors, Age of Extinction is filled to the brim with giant robot battles, inappropriate sexual innuendos, and product placement. And for its efforts, it became the first Transformers movie to cross the $1 billion mark at the global box office. The Transformers franchise has always been about product placement. After all, the original 80s cartoon's primary purpose was selling toys. It's no different in live action, with cars from brands like Chevrolet and Lamborghini constantly gracing the screen. Product placement runs rampant throughout Age of Extinction, and while there are plenty of examples, the most intrusive instance has to do with Bud Light. Wahlberg's character Kate is nearly killed when the burning wreckage of his spaceship flies down the street. It slams into a Bud Light truck, scattering bottles and cans all over the street. When a driver whose car he hit angrily confronts him over the damage, he gets upset, grabs a Bud, and takes a mean swig before threatening the guy, like anyone would do. Your car? Huh? Oh. Sweetie, hand me my alien gun. Superman is all about protecting truth, justice, and the American way. And in 1980, few things were more American than Marlboro Reds. Nevertheless, it's still pretty jarring to see just how much product placement for the cigarettes managed to make its way into Superman 2. The first theatrical Superman sequel saw Kal-El battle General Zod and his minions, and as they fight in the streets of Metropolis, the Man of Steel is thrown into the side of a truck bearing the company's logo. The truck is present for a lot of screen time. Even though cigarette companies refrain from placing logos on their trucks in order to prevent highway hijackings. It all makes a lot more sense when you learn that Philip Morris International paid upwards of $40,000 to have a brand presence throughout the film. Anti smoking advocates had a field day with Superman 2, which references Marlboro cigarettes 20 times throughout the film. Things heated up so much that Congress held a hearing focused on cigarette advertisements and children, resulting in legislation restricting similar product placements in the future. It's not uncommon for movies to feature products from multiple companies. Most of us consume several branded goods every day, after all. What's weird is when a movie features a single company in far greater detail than any other. For some reason, that reason being money. The 2017 Power Rangers movie has a distracting preoccupation with Krispy Kreme. Apparently, everything in the Power Rangers story revolves around a chain of donut stores. The film features a training scene in one location, while another is the location of the Zeo Crystal. It's also the secret location of the evil villain Rita Repulsa, who doesn't let anything stop her from enjoying a sugary treat. Krispy Kreme. This is a special place. Very special. It must be. During the movie's climactic battle, Repulsa stops at her local Krispy Kreme, sits back, and enjoys a donut before being interrupted by a touch of light destruction. It's such an unusual scene that the audience couldn't help but notice that they were being shown a commercial for donuts, where a fight scene should be. 
Bones, centered around the working and eventual romantic relationship between FBI agent Celie Booth and forensic anthropologist Temperance Bones Brennan. The series ran for 12 whole seasons, but it might not have gone on for so long if Toyota hadn't injected tons of cash into the production throughout most of its run. You'll see Toyota's vehicles in many scenes, but the worst product placements involve driving. Whenever Brendan and Booth have to get somewhere, they typically drive together, and when they do, they're always admiring the many features of their Toyota vehicle. It's hard to see anything but a car commercial during these awkward sequences. Whoa, ghost driver. How'd you do that? It's called Intelligent Parking Assist. The car guides itself into the parking spot. Wow, look at that, huh? The ad breaks are typically only around a minute long, but they're incredibly blatant. And after a certain point, they just start being funny. Nevertheless, it always feels a bit like the show had been sold out to a car company, which, in a way, it had. In World War Z, Brad Pitt plays Jerry Lane, a former UN investigator intent on finding a cure for a zombie plague. As he travels across the globe, he learns more about the virus, ultimately finding himself at a World Health Organization research facility in Cardiff, Wales. After realizing that the infected avoid anyone with a terminal condition, he injects himself with… well, he doesn't know what it is, but it's something. After walking by several zombies without being attacked, Jerry realizes that he needs to make enough noise to redirect the zombies' attention away from his allies. Luckily, there's a Pepsi machine waiting for him. Not a normal soda machine with a reasonable selection of options, but a device specifically designed to dispense Pepsi. That's no problem, though, as Jerry appears to be a big Pepsi fan. He takes a long swig of his favorite soda before triggering the machine's release, spilling aluminum cans everywhere and making enough sound to save his friends. It's a nice moment of heroism, if you can ignore the fact that you're being advertised to. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was a massive success when it came out as an animated series in 1987, and it didn't take long for a live-action film to hit theaters. The 1990 release did a lot of things right. The story worked, the turtles looked great, and they were still the same characters that fans had come to love. They even shared their animated counterparts' appreciation for pizza, but their loyalty in live-action seems to lie with one specific brand. In one scene, the turtles order a pizza to be delivered directly to their sewer grate. Since they're in New York City, there are dozens of incredible pizzerias for the heroes in a half shell to choose from, but instead, they decide to go with Domino's. The delivery man makes sure to show off the Domino's logo, and Mikey references the restaurant's former 30 minutes or less guarantee. Wise man say, forgiveness is divine, but never pay full price for late pizza. It's a funny scene, but if you've ever eaten at Lombardi's or Joe's Pizza in Manhattan, you know exactly what the turtles are missing. Shazam! Fury of the Gods hit theaters in 2023, delving into the main character's mythos and introducing a whole bunch of villains and CGI monsters. When Shazam and his family of superhero teenagers band together to fight the evil Calypso, she brings forth an army of Greek mythical creatures, including the deadliest of them all, unicorns. Rather than benevolent creatures, unicorns of the DC Extended Universe are vicious beasts, and apparently, the only way to tame them is with a bag of Skittles. Back in 1982, Steven Spielberg partnered with Reese's Pieces for E.T. the Extraterrestrial, but Fury of the Gods fails where he succeeded simply because the use of Skittles in the scene is downright ridiculous. To pacify a unicorn, super teen Darla feeds one a bag of Skittles, stopping it in its tracks. The advertisement is so obvious, it's laughable, and it effectively ruins the entire scene by coming off as a soulless cash grab. The Walking Dead is easily one of the most successful zombie franchises ever, and while the TV series lost its audience as it progressed, it helped spawn an ever-expanding universe complete with spin-offs, video games, and plenty of product placement. Car factories and dealerships were probably quick to close their doors when the zombie apocalypse started, but judging by how often the Hyundai logo is visible throughout the show, you'd think they were still in business. Not only that, but the most commonly seen model is a 2011 Hyundai 
Hyundai Tucson Limited. Even though the Walking Dead apocalypse started in 2010, every time a pristine Hyundai is shown in The Walking Dead, it ruins viewers' suspension of disbelief just a little bit more. Walkers decompose when they're exposed to the elements, but cars somehow stay completely free of rust and grime. Hyundai understandably didn't want its vehicles featured as zombified, destroyed wrecks, but that means that they kill any scenes they're in. The Wizard is both a feature film and an incredibly long commercial for Nintendo. You can't escape the fact that the film promotes every aspect of the Nintendo Entertainment System by showcasing its games and peripheral devices. That said, it's also a fun kids' movie about a group of children who travel to California to compete in a video game tournament. The kids eventually encounter popular gamer Lucas Barton, who shows off his skills playing Rad Racer with the Power Glove. The Power Glove was a glove outfitted with everything a kid needed to play games on the NES. And while it looked cool and was a novel idea, it didn't work very well and ended up being a commercial failure. Despite this, Lucas shows his proficiency in using the device that Nintendo was desperate to sell. He keeps it in a briefcase and shows it off as if it were the holy grail. I love the power glove. It's so bad. Even Nintendo's most die-hard fans will readily admit that The Wizard goes a little hard in its devotion to the power glove. The Fantastic Four is one of Marvel Comics' best superhero teams, but it's had a tumultuous history of live-action movie adaptations. The first commercial release came in 2005, and while it didn't impress critics, it brought in tons of cash, ensuring a sequel would follow. The sequel, Fantastic Four – Rise of the Silver Surfer, hit theaters in 2007 and made a decent sum as well. The sequel centers around the Silver Surfer preparing Earth for the coming of Galactus, while Doctor Doom returns to muck everything up. Up. The four find themselves in need of transportation, so Reed calls in a surprise he'd apparently been working on – the Fantastic Car. The Fantastic Car has been a part of the comic since 1962, so fans were happy to see it. But they weren't nearly as excited to see the Dodge logo plastered on the live-action version. Naturally, Johnny Storm feels the need to inquire about the particulars of the vehicle's engine. Hemi? Of course. The scene was a play on Dodge's commercials at the time, making it particularly cringeworthy. Every movie that features product placement owes some thanks to the silent era. When it all began, the practice had been used before, but it wasn't until 1927's Wings that product placement became mainstream. The silent film was the first ever to win the Academy Award for Best Picture, and the studio re-released it a year later with synchronized sound. Wings is about a romantic rivalry between World War I pilots, set around the Battle of San Miel. While Wings holds many distinctions, it's remembered by some today more for its use of product placement than anything else. Several shots linger on Hershey's chocolate bars, and each time it happens, it completely ruins the immersion. This was especially true of the silent release of Wings, but remained consistent when it became a talkie. In one glaringly obvious example, Cadet White and David Armstrong are in a tent when one grabs something to hand to the other. There's a bar of chocolate in the way, and it falls as the camera focuses on it. It stands out more than it should, making Wings the first Best Picture winner to use product placement and the first movie to do so poorly.